That was Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell from the Commonwealth of Kentucky uh, denouncing an effort by Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid uh, to force votes on 17 or so federal judges that are bottled up inside the U.S. Senate. Uh, and this is Power Play. I'm Chris Steyerwalt. And you can tell in Congress they're closer to a deal the meaner they talk. The best indication uh, that something is about to happen in Congress is that the rhetoric gets really, really ugly. And we've seen the uh, appropriate kabuki-style escalation of rhetoric in recent days in Congress. They're getting ready to pass some big transportation legislation and do the final things, believe it or not, final things uh, here in March that they need to do uh, before the November election so everybody can go back and start attacking each other again uh, with uh, television ads, robocalls, and direct mail pieces. So congratulations, Internet. You're about to get all of that. Uh, but remember, we do have, instead of just this presidential election, we will talk about it. Joe Trippi is going to be here. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about foreign policy. James Joyner is going to be here. You love them both, but you know who else you love? And rightly so, Internet. Uh, you love Doug Thornell. He is the former spokesman for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, uh, right-hand man to Chris Van Hollen, uh, and he is a Democratic strategist. And Ford O'Connell uh, needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. He is the chairman of the Civic Forum PAC. He is on the red team, uh, and he went to Duke, so feel free <laughs> <laughs> to feel free today as you're filling out your bracket to blame him for their totally unfair seating, as usual. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Uh, so we do have this presidential election, but uh, the, ho the, the House, Republicans hold a 25-seat majority in the House. Uh, Democrats are sitting on a four-seat majority in the Senate. Um, and we thought a few months ago that it looked very likely that Republicans would be able to take the Senate and hold the House. Now, uh, the household looks more in doubt, still likely, but the Senate holds up in the air. Uh, Doug, let's start with you. Can the Republicans uh, steal steal the Senate away from your team? Well, it's looking less and less likely. They uh, Democrats caught a couple breaks last week with Olympia Snow retiring and then Bob Kerry getting in the race in Nebraska. They need to win four. Uh, Republicans need to win four, but Democrats are, they have a cash on hand advantage. The NRSC has a, about $2 million less than the DSCC. I think it's going to be tough for them to win the Senate. You know, of course, if they don't win the White House, they have to win five seats. So uh, right now you have to, you know, you have to, if I was a betting man four months ago, I, you probably, I'm, you might have got a different answer. Not me. on air, but yeah. You're right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I think Democrats are looking pretty good. And um, of course, you know, that can change. But um, the, the Olympia Snow decision was a backbreaker, I think, for Republicans. I, I do think the snow to, Snow's retirement was a little bit of a problem. I do think. And we, and we should point out, Olympia Snow not only isn't running for re-election, which hurt Republicans, but she did it in such a way that essentially made sure that Ford's team could not get on the ballot because she did it so late that it would be that it would be essentially impossible to get the requisite. I, I think the term is it was a real kick in the pants. It was yes, <laughs> it, no, it wasn't, pants wasn't the word he used before, but that's not important. It, it absolutely was. And you know, if Romney is the nominee, which in all likelihood he will be, we have a real shot to do it. The question it will hinge on Florida, in my opinion, is whether or not Connie Mack can win because we have to win Virginia. This is down we have Florida, to win Florida, Congressman. We have to win in Montana. We're going to have to win in Missouri. But I do think. I think in Nebraska we're good to go. Any one of the three can you know help us, but I think Bruning right now at least gives us the best bet at this moment. But it, anything could happen. There. Nebraska is an interesting one because even if Bob Kerry doesn't win, I think it's going to force the NRSC to spend some money there. They probably weren't planning to spend money in Nebraska. The other state to look at is Indiana, and there's a real crucial primary there for uh, Dick Luger. And if he loses, I think that state becomes immediately in play with uh, Joe Donnelly. Uh, it's a little bit harder for Donnelly if Luger and is the nominee. Donnelly, Donnelly is, so Dick Luger is the number one target for the Tea Party this year. Right. Uh, Orrin Hatch is basically a pled for his life. Uh, senator from Utah, he moved to the right and then also said, if you just give me one more term, I promise. He said it's 77, which is, I guess, not that bold of a statement. You let me right. serve for six more years, <laughs> well, the, and then I promise I'll retire. But now Luger from Indiana is the number one Tea Party target. He's the guy that they love to hate, uh, and they've challenged his residency in the state because he doesn't have a place there, which is, we still generally find to be a nice thing for people to do to at least keep an apartment somewhere. Indiana does look like it could be trouble for you. It, it does, and I think there's a couple of other places where we may have a Christine O'Donnell effect. And the question is, is how many sort of crazies do we put up there? Oh, we do have we do not, have a few bloody, prim words, few bloody primaries. Few bloody primaries. The question is, how many do we you know bank on winning? 
You know, and, and that's really the question. Don't get me wrong. I, I see where Murdoch's coming from. I'm not talking about Murdoch. Oh, I am uh, Richard Murdoch, not uh, Rupert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in, in that case, you know, it's really, you know, who wins those primaries? And I think, you know, it's going to be really telling by June in my party, you know, who we're going to put up there. But I think we do have some very solid candidates. And if, you know, those candidates went out, I think we would have a real shot. But I do think the field has been narrowed. And really, it's going to come down to about seven Senate races. And, and, and whatever happens, we can count on this. It's going to be the Senate will probably be closer after this election than it is now. Currently, right. we're, we're going to gain seats. Seat. The only question Whether is it's 48 or 49. That there, uh, you know, uh, that Nebraska seat uh, looks very, very tough, and there's a couple of spots where it's going to be hard. But the House, mm -hmm. and this is very interesting. So the Republicans have their largest majority in 67 years. They never Republicans never, 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 never get a majority this big. When they get, when they historically have gotten majorities like the one that they had in the Gingrich era, which is just over the transom, barely getting through, then they have to pull conservative Democrats to their side uh, when they lose Northeastern Republicans and stuff like that. Uh, they have been able, despite deep dissension in their party, to get legislation moved. Doug, uh, how much of that 25 seat cushion are you guys going to be able to take away from the Republicans? A lot. Now, I think that there are a couple things to keep in mind. There are 60, around 60 Republicans who sit in seats that Obama won in 2008. There are mm -hmm. 20 Republicans who sit in seats that Kerry won in 2004. The DCCC has outraised uh, the NRC, NRCC regularly, and they have more cash on hand. And I think the DCCC has done a very good job of recruiting candidates, these red to blue candidates that can compete uh, in these more moderate districts, center right districts. Now, look, it's still going to be an uphill challenge. But the one thing to keep in mind, you know, if we're just, I want to bring in a little policy here. No. Paul Ryan, um, uh, Paul Ryan is going to introduce his budget again at the end of next week or around then, and I think that's going to be another opportunity for Democrats to bring up the uh, Republicans want to end Medicare argument, and so that will, I think, help Democrats. Uh, over the course of the rest of the next year, it helped them in New York. Will they get to that 25 marker? I don't know. It's tough. Winning 25 seats is really hard. You, you, I think you won't get gonna, to the 25 marker. Well, I mean, we'll, look. I think if you look at general, if you look at generic polls across the board, we've got three or four. We've got a three or four point advantage. Now, I'm not someone who relies on those. If you look at in-state, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you need a, about a five point advantage. Exactly. Well, but if you also look at we in, have 33 in, at risk. You have 15. If you at look risk, at okay. in-district, if it, you look at in-district polls, too, of their most vulnerable Democrats are actually doing well there. Look, I'm not saying we're, that we're, we're, I'm we're, not, you're going to gain seats because of California board. and Illinois redistricting. Yeah. We're going to hold the House. The question is whether or not we can take the Senate. We really need to take the Senate because President Obama right now looks like he's going to win, and we actually have to block his government knows best policies. That's the bottom line. If if uh, if Rick Santorum happens to be the nominee, Which I, think, I, think the, I think Republicans <laughs> lose the House, and if Mitt Romney continues the way he's campaigning, which has been very bad, I think he's been a very poor front runner. With gas um, prices where they are, you guys are in trouble. Well, gas me. prices were. President gas Obama's prices already pulled the gas. funding from the House Democrats. He already knows he's but, in for a tight election. This is going to come down to the gentlemen, 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 last, Doug, yeah. last word, 10 seconds. Well, all I can say is that the prospects for the Senate Democrats are much improved. I think House Democrats have a lot of momentum. It's going to be an uphill climb, but I think they can do it. They've got to get a couple more candidates who, who can compete in some of these districts. We're going to win both. There you go. All right. Uh, we'll actually give the last word to Ellery USA. You know what would solve a lot of the problems in Congress? Term limits, especially in the Senate. Interesting note, Santorum said he supported a two-term Senate limit and then ran for a third term anyway. Uh, thank you, Ellery. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. When we come back, 